Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Seeker Plus yet again today. I am Trace and this is episode three of three. In our collaboration with Bad Science, we brought in Dr. Tammy Ma from the National Ignition Facility to talk about Star Trek. It's like the longest topic name we've ever had on Seeker Plus. Subscribe for more. Make sure you come check us out over on wherever you get your audio podcasts and subscribe to both Seeker Plus and Bad Science. Today we're going to talk about warp speed and how it's related to the International Space Station. We talked about bacteria on the space shuttle and planetary protection. We talked about the difference between fission and fusion and why fission sucks and creates radiation and waste. It's going to be great. Make sure you stick around. Dr. Tammy Ma knows her stuff so well. And even though Ethan doesn't really know his stuff, he's super positive on everything. And that's why bad science is so cool. So anyway, let's kick into it. So like yeah. in Star Trek, they have warp speed, mm -hmm. right? So they're not like going really fast. They're warping space to travel. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was, uh, I don't know, kind of silly, but maybe it's realistic that they're all like just hanging out on the ship during warp speed. So they're going warp speed, but they're also just like very casually having conversations and hanging out. Um, I think that's actually kind of cool because that's what happens with, say, like the International Space Station, right? Okay. And it's going around the Earth every 90 minutes or so, so super fast. Yeah. But when you're on there, you don't realize it's going super fast. You're just doing your thing. You're doing Whoa. your astronaut thing. I did not know that the International Space Station went that fast. It goes very fast. Tens of thousands of miles an hour. Whoa. Yeah. That's like almost warp speed. <laughs> almost. <laughs> okay, this entire podcast was yeah. just now worth it for that fact. Uh, why is it going so fast? Is there a reason for that? There must be. So it doesn't fall into the earth. <laughs> that, that's actually true. I mean, really? No, yeah. it's true. Yeah. no, it's a great reason. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um, so well, I guess Tammy, it, do you want to <laughs> I don't have a better explanation. <laughs> that sounds legit. I mean, it, orbiting is basically going so fast that even though you're falling, mm -hmm. you don't ever hit the ground. Gotcha. Like the Earth right. falls yeah. away from you f faster than you are falling toward it. Would they be able to go slower if they were further from the Earth? Yeah. So I would imagine. Is so. there a reason that they're close by? Shuttle, the, sh the space shuttle can only get so high. Ah, so they, could, like they could go get get stuff with the space shuttle and then bring it back. So Isn't they're in low Earth orbit. Really hard then to meet up with it? How do they do that if it's going so the fast? The space shuttle goes pretty fast too. Okay. Yeah, it's actually not so hard. Because you, you can't. <laughs> All of the effort. Oh, okay, easy. sorry. I can do that. I'm not an arrogant bastard, I promise. Um, <laughs> no, it's just like trajectories, because you know exactly the speed and where that where it's gonna the ISS be. is, yeah, and then where to meet it. Okay. Yeah. The whole thing seems so dangerous to it's, me. It is. It is it dangerous. Is, yeah. yeah, things get broken, and, you know, there's. They'll have missed approaches where they're, they're like, okay, we got it. Oh, we don't got it. We got to back off and like try again and again. Oh, how do you back off? So they have little thrusters that they'll move away and then try again, oh, okay. and again and again. For some reason so. in my head, I just feel like the International Space Station is right outside of the atmosphere and they only have like one shot and then they have to come back down <laughs> and then, but my, my head is broken. So. No, it's interesting because the more, the more you learn about it over the years doing like D News and Seeker, We've done a lot of episodes about this stuff, and okay. so like the atmosphere doesn't actually just end at some point. So the ISS is actually impacting parts of the atmosphere high up. Whoa. It has very little drag, so they occasionally have to boost it to like pull it back up away from the Earth That's again cool. and again because it's got just a little bit of drag on it. Is it affecting the atmosphere in a bad way or no? A good no, way? no, it's the same Neutral. as like if you put a spacecraft back into the atmosphere, the atmosphere is just slowing it down based on friction. Oh, okay. Um, so the ISS has a very small amount of that. Well, funny enough, I used to actually work in astrobiology. Oh, and okay. what we used to do was we would... <laughs> Where was that before? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we would take swabs from um, either the ISS or the space shuttle from Kennedy before it went up to space. Oh. And then we would try to um, figure out which microbes are there. Um, and you expect when your, your spacecraft goes up, most of the microbes will get killed just from mm -hmm. the UV, but some of them do survive. Some mm -hmm. of them have UV resistance. Whoa. And so those are the ones you have to watch out for because if you ever want to colonize something like Mars or mm -hmm. another planet, mm -hmm. you want to make sure we don't bring up Earth microbes. Whoa. Were you working with the pristine. planetary protection? I was so at JPL. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that's so cool. So wait, what is that? Uh, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. No, no, I don't GPL. I'm saying, what's this planetary, planetary perfection? Perfection? Yeah. Perfe well, planetary. <laughs> We're going to perfect That sounds pretty planets. cool, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Let's you start that. That sounds yeah. more Romulan, actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, planetary Protection Office, so. Yeah. Can, it was just the Astrobiology Group at GPL. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. But a so cool name. Their job it is to not cool. contaminate other planets, yeah. if we can. Wow. So they'll, like, the InSight Lander that was just launched 
was likely baked or bombarded with UV radiation to kill anything on oh, the outside of it. So smart. if it gets to Mars, it doesn't accidentally contaminate Mars with Earth bacteria. Great. I hope we do the same thing with Earth. I feel like we're contaminating it constantly. All the time. Yeah. So the difference, you, you mentioned it earlier, between fusion and fission. Yeah. So fission is you take a heavy element, mm -hmm. something like plutonium or uranium, and you break it down. And when you break it down, you are again liberating mass. Because um, what you break it into then weighs a little bit, when you add those two things up, they weigh a little bit less than your original piece did. Oh. Um, and so, whereas fusion is taking something small and pushing it together to make something bigger. Okay. Similar processes, um, except that fission um, in a way is a little bit easier because um, with something like plutonium, it naturally wants to break down. It's not a super stable element. Okay. Um, and that's why in a fission reactor, the kinds of nuclear plants we have today that are running today, mm -hmm. um, you do have to worry about things like runaway um, and overheating because essentially you just have to have enough mass to get the reaction going. And if it's too much, or if you're generating too many neutrons, then it will run away. Whereas with fusion, um, in order to, it's so hard to get started. You have to put so much energy in it initially to get it started that you don't have to worry about runaway because you can always turn off your lasers or cut off your original energy source. Oh, okay, That's got you. And do you mess with both or are you a uh, fusion? We are, we are fusion okay. on the NIF, yeah, so only fusion. Screw fission. Those guys are wusses. Sure, or let's say that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mess with that? Well, when yeah. you said it was easy. Messier. Everything's so messy with fission. Yeah, that's true. It's ah. not easy. Yeah. It's it's messier. It's yeah, very messy. That's a better word. Okay. There's stuff flying everywhere and okay. alpha particles. Mm -hmm. and it's, ugh, God, yeah, gross. Ugh, ugh. It's just, ugh. that's disgusting, honestly. Yeah, I can't really eat now for the rest gross. of the day. It's like the dirty, dirty parts of physics. Okay, sweet. So let's not mess with that. Um, you mentioned, and I'm going to say this wrong probably, Deuterium? Yeah. Did I say that right? Yeah. yeah. You got it. Holy crap. You're um, learning stuff from this podcast. Look at you. <laughs> that's true. I mean, that's kind of the point here. Um, <laughs> so the, there's part of this which is fiction and, and part of this which is nonfiction. Um, in Star Trek, they have impulse drives, which mm. is the fiction part, which obviously does not exist, but that's how they travel around in space. Supposedly, it's not uh, light speed. It's slower than light speed, but they use deuterium. deuterium Fish, no, fusion, uh, a, a reaction, a deuterium fusion reaction. Yes. I'm a scientist. Nice I'm job. Sound like you just said it. You sound I'm basically like a scientist. Yeah, yeah it does okay. um, So, does that make sense? Is that how that would yeah. work? Yeah, yeah. So, you can actually fuse anything together, any kinds of atoms together. You just need okay. that much energy. Um, we pick hydrogen because it's the lightest element, so it's supposedly the easiest to fuse. Um, and deuterium, what that is, is an isotope of hydrogen. Um, so there's basically an extra neutron. It's heavy hydrogen. Basically. Heavy hydrogen. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And yeah, you can definitely, um, DD fusion, where you fuse two deuterium atoms together, is a very energetic source, actually. Is that so. useful? Like, do we use that for anything now? Yeah, we um, we actually do DD fusion in the lab at the NIF. Oh. And um, if you count the number of neutrons that come out, you know exactly the number of fusion reactions that happen. Oh. Um, the other type of fusion we actually do is deuterium tritium. Tritium. Fusion with tritium, yeah. New vocab word. Yep. New word. Um, it's actually slightly heavier than deuterium because there's two neutrons okay. um, in the nucleus instead of just one. And uh, deuterium tritium releases actually uh, slightly more energy. Okay. Uh, and it's actually a little bit easier. Actually, I take that back. It's not easier to initiate. Um, but it generates more energy than the DD does. So. Okay, trinium. Tritium. 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 Is, that's what I said. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and are there real world applications? Have, can, does this happen somewhere? Uh, there's a number of real world applications besides um, just energy as clean energy. Um, uh, we have deuterium and tritium inside our nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. <laughs> so yeah. only for a you good went cause. There. <laughs> <laughs> That's my fault. You started you it. it. You started it. Um, um, well, I mean, th these sound uh, really cool and clean. And so why don't, you know, planes and cars and all of this, like, are we going to transition at some point to this kind of thing? Or because from what I understand, the way that my car runs is not clean and it's expensive and I hate it. 
So how far are we from something else and what would it be, question mark? I think, <laughs> well, we have to demonstrate it in the laboratory first um, and we have to do that once. Um, and Wait, so that's never been done? What do you mean? So we do fusion on a daily basis. Okay. Um, and using all our lasers, we easily get 10 to this more than 10 to the 16 reactions each time we do an implosion um, but that doesn't mean we're actually generating enough energy out it's not more mm -hmm. than we put in so it's not an efficient cycle yet okay yeah so we still got to work on that and until we do that i can't say can't see it in your car anytime soon right mm -hmm. also unless you want to drive around a niff for now yeah that's a big yeah. car i mean it's a really big car I mean, I'm down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Have, have like a jacuzzi in there and a uh, yeah. dance floor and whole apartment building. Really. Love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. rent it out. I love it. <laughs> to people. That's true. Um, so, I'm in. Uh, radiation being waste uh, from these reactions is that? Does that make sense? What so, I said. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for us, the, the the byproduct from a deuterium tritium fusion reaction is helium. Helium and energy. Oh, so that's why it's clean. Trend. That's why it's clean. Got yeah. It. And that's why there isn't any higher higher level nuclear waste. Where where does that come in? When is that a, a worry? That comes in with fission. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, ugh, dirty, yeah. dirty exactly. fission. Ugh, God, exactly. everything's oh, a problem geez. with fission. Um, and primarily, it's because when you break down your heavy element, the other elements that you have that it breaks into may not be super stable, okay. can still be radioactive, still producing energetic stuff that's coming out. Yeah, and you you have to do something with it. That's the waste. Got it. Yeah. So imagine Did you I have, right, I mean, yeah, as far as I know, um, <laughs> like so, I said, I'm making up as we go. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Sounds so good. So think of, um, a uranium, think of a, a hydrogen atom. It's just like one little balloon, right? Okay. It's just one. And so what we want to do is we want to smush two or a bubble like right you want to smush two bubbles together and you're going to lose some some in the reaction that's like fusion right okay but fission is like a whole well 92 proton bubbles okay. and like 150 neutron bubbles so it's just this huge mass okay. so if you poke it you're going to break those bubbles into two and you're going to lose a lot in the process and mm. they might not be stable and things might like collapse or break into a whole bunch of other pieces yeah. so that's what's happening in fission so it gets that's why it's messier because there's just so much more happening gotcha whereas with hydrogen it's so much simpler i'm putting finger quotes up because yeah, yeah. it is just like we can control these two little bubbles or at least we think we can right why do like people mess with fission it's easier to, to kind of Tammy's point earlier. It's a oh. little easier. It's just it's it, uranium 235, which we use a lot, wants to break down It it kind of almost right. wants to do it. So right. when they discovered it, um, they discovered that it would do this. They essentially built a system where they could shoot neutrons at uranium. OK. And when one of the neutrons hit it, it would break it into pieces. Mm. They were surprised. They didn't know that that's what would happen. What they thought would happen is it would make heavier elements, not lighter ones. OK. So it took them a little while to figure out what they had discovered. OK. Um, and they I don't remember what elements they ended up with, but uh, like polonium. I don't know. I don't even remember now. That sounds um, good. Yeah, bologna. Yeah, bologna. <laughs> um, but they ended up with these lighter elements, and they said, oh, so what we have done is break these this giant mass into two smaller masses okay. but those masses aren't naturally created right so they decay and they have like a, a whole mess that comes after them yeah and unfortunately all of the stuff get, gets thrown away the thing that blows my mind about radiation as waste is that's only the first level of waste is the radiation itself mm -hmm. but like let's say you work in a nuclear plant okay. and that does fission the radiation is affecting not just like direct contact but the janitor's broom if mm -hmm. they're sweeping up all the time for 10 years they might have to take that broom and put it away as radioactive waste because it's just had so much radiation around it for so long you that know stuff scares me so bad it's not that scary once you understand more about it it's more mm. scary because we don't understand it the yeah, more you understand about why. it the less scary it gets it is serious yeah but it's not necessarily a scary thing uh, if you kind of know more. Yeah, maybe as I do the podcast, I'll be less scared of it, but until then, maybe. it just freaks me out. It's kind of the same thing with flying insects. They also scare me. They are scary. I yeah. don't understand. I don't, the biology is just weird. How it's do they weird. fly? I don't know. I'm don't scared by it. those new robots that can walk on two legs. And open doors now? Yeah. <laughs> and jump. <laughs> they scare me. Terrifying. There aren't, there aren't that many robots in Star Trek. Just to bring it back to the movie. Oh, that's true. true. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Like, Star Trek The Next Generation, there's one. I mean, two, technically, lore, whatever. Yeah, but I feel like if I did anything futuristic, there'd be robots all over the place. Right. Yeah. 
Do you think we're ever going to get to a Star Trek future? You should tell us on your very own website with Domain.com. Domain.com is awesome, affordable, and reliable. They have all the tools that you need to build your new website. And they can fulfill all your website needs. They offer .com and .net domain names. They have intuitive website builders. And they have over 300 domain extensions to fit your needs, from .club to .space to .store to .dog, .pizza, you name it. Take that first step in creating an identity online and visit domain.com. You know what? Seriously, though, why weren't there more robots in Star Trek? That's like blowing my mind right now. Where were they? Couldn't robots be like building the starships in space dock or something? Why are there like shuttles flying around? That makes no sense. Anyway, there's no doubt in my mind that the future is going to have more robots in it than the present. Absolutely, 100%. They're going to be interacting with us. They're going to be taking our jobs. Some of those actually in a good way. And hopefully, like I mentioned earlier in the series, that might open us up to betterment, pluralism, curiosity, and exploration of the galaxy. Casual. Anyway, what do you think? Do you think we're ever going to get to Star Trek? You can tell us. You know, find us on Twitter, Facebook, you name it. Let us know.